fuck up. Come in, darling. All right, all right. <laughs> Welcome back to a new video. Here with me, I have some special people. That's right, my two fave sisters, Rabia, my roommate, Hi guys. and Hannah, my. Hey. You're the sister? I don't know. It's Virgo twin. Virgo twin, yes. Yeah. All right, guys, so for today's video, we're going to be doing a mukbang. It's going to be really special because we all brought our own food from our own cultures. If you guys want to talk about your culture and what food you guys brought in, do you want to go first? I'll show you. Since you're the star of the show. Look at my sweet sister. <laughs> so, for all y'all who don't know, I'm Filipino. I actually immigrated from the Philippines when I was eight. And immigrant gang. Uh, <laughs> Not immigrant gang. Uh, I lived there for years. We don't discriminate. So we don't. And so, for today, I actually had my mom home cook these Filipino foods. If you're Filipino and you eat these foods, they might look different from what you usually eat. And that's okay because every recipe has its own thing. So for today, we're gonna have three uh, dishes that uh, Filipinos usually eat, and that's gonna be lumpia. And lumpia is kind of like an egg roll. It's so good. How did you try this lumpia? I love lumpia. How's your mom's lumpia? Exactly, this is my mommy's lumpia, so. What is it called, lumpia? Lumpia. Lumpia. It's like an egg roll. She had yeah, it's like a Filipino egg roll. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. And then we're gonna have also pansi, and pansi is basically Filipino noodles. Oh, and, 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 so and, and then lastly, we have for dessert, we have rice cakes, and they're called puto. And Yo, y'all like, really came with like the three course meals. I feel so unprepared. Ah, no, <laughs> I, I thought like one of my things. So I was like, I don't know if it's too much. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> don't worry, we have enough food for everybody. Yeah. So mine is um. Like, I guess you could call it steak bits. It's called tips. It's an Ethiopian dish. Um, I'm also an immigrant. I came from Ethiopia when I was seven. Hey. But um, basically, <laughs> this is uh, beef. It's steak, and it has meat, meat, uh, barbara, and salt, and mm. just some oil and onions. And yeah, that's, that's all that is. It smells good. It's I'm torch. Really, I'm, I'm yeah. I wish we had the injera. I know. I uh, I wish I had injera. I have meat meat on. Like, you know, if you want some, injera. Injera. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> I wish we had that. It's okay. Next time. Next time. Okay, guys. So I have two things. So I'm going to hold one of them for right now. So I have this, which is called samosa chat. So I'm Pakistani. And this is like kind of like an Indian type of street food thing. So it's like... um. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of samosas. Yes, yeah. I love samosas. Okay, so they're pretty much like broken up samosas. So it's samosas on the bottom, and then they put like um a, like a chickpea type curry curry called like jana or like chole if you call it that. And so they like they put that over top with like a whole bunch of spices and um, some sauce and then like onions, peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers. So this is really good. So it's and then I also have this, which is chicken biryani. So biryani is like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Jimmy to yours. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is like, um, like traditionally Indian, but it's also Muslim by some, okay. by some, I don't know, something. I don't know. But I'm so this is pretty much just. I want to eat it. Something. Yeah, so this is pretty much just like a spicy Indian type rice. Yes. Just a whole bunch of spices. Um, you can make it with different types of meat. So for my next time, chicken. Yeah. Okay, okay. So y'all know we better eat good today. Yes. yes. And that we culture this bug. So we're actually going to start um, distributing all the foods into plates while we eat. And we're going to also be spilling the tea on a few questions that um, we made today. It's going to be a girl talk today, sisters. We're going to have yes, pillow honey. talk. Thank you, baby. The real UMD edition. <laughs> oh, and I also have some like raita, which is like pretty much like a yogurt spicy type sauce if you want it with your rice. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Y'all, look at our plates mm -hmm. right now. Guys, I already started digging in. Yeah, oh. we're so <laughs> myself. Nah, we're so like, hungry. Yo, I don't even know how we're gonna be able to talk about eat. Like, this looks so good. Mmm. Mm. 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 Okay, before we get into the questions, I'm gonna do a quick disclaimer. Again, we don't know all the answers. Everything that we say is our all opinions, and don't I mean, take anything we're saying we're saying like too seriously. Yeah. If you take it to heart, right. then it applies. Yeah. So think about the shit. Oh, it. Shady <laughs> bitch. I'm just saying. But honestly, though, like we're all still growing together. We're all still in our twenties in college, so we don't know the answer. 
answers. These are all just based on experiences that we think and all opinions. Like, if you agree, disagree, comment down below. Tell us what you think. We'd love to learn more and hear yeah. about you. So yeah, let's get right into the tea. Do it. <sighs> Sip in that tea. Mm -hmm. All right. Question number one, numero uno. Do you believe that once a cheater is always a cheater? Honestly, I think it's only applicable to a person depending on like what they want. And that's because people who are like usually serial cheaters or like when they want to cheat, it's a decision. Right. And I believe that if you're always cheating on somebody, like that term like once a cheater, always a cheater, that's usually for people who are always constantly cheating or like serial cheaters who want to cheat. And I feel like you can only change within yourself. Like that type of behavior, like cheating, is like an internal thing, like an internal want. So it's something that you have to grow from and grow out of if you want to. Like people who are usually always cheating is because they want to cheat and they just don't want to grow out of it, so. Yeah. Yeah, I've literally seen guys who are in relationships with a girl and will cheat on her 24 seven, but then like break up with her and go into an <laughs> Like the next one. No, yeah, go to the next you. one, and they're one hundred percent loyal. Like they change, right. and so I think it might just be like the person that you find right. to make you stop cheating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like a pretty firm believer in like people deserve second chances, but I don't think that people deserve second chances for the same mistake. So I do think that people who cheat will continue to cheat, but aside of me, also kind of. So like what you guys are saying, especially like what Hannah's saying about someone coming along and being able to change that for you because mm -hmm. I feel like that's almost like an indicator of like what real love is. Yeah. Like that you don't want to hurt the person that you love. You don't want to destroy somebody. Yeah. Right. I think like when a person is constantly cheating on you, like it's kind of just a sign that like you're just not supposed to be with that person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's like reading the same book over and over again. It's just right. always the same ending. I feel like even romance movies, that's what they highlight, though, because it's like the story is, oh, he was a player, and then he found this girl, and then he became faithful, and they yeah, got married. Yeah. Like, that's the storyline that they follow, you know? Right. And so... <clears throat> but not to say, if a man cheats on you, that you should stay with them. Tristan talks to him. <laughs> Tristan, like, try he not has to talk to him. Oh, my God. He is a serial cheater, yo. Yeah. I... He's just... Yeah, we're not going to go into, you know, Tristan Thompson's... I don't care enough. Yeah, I don't really care enough. Like, but I'm just saying, like, I feel like it's, like, different when it's, like, a one-time thing with someone that you love versus, like, a constant thing. But at the end of the day, you know yourself and you value yourself. And you shouldn't, even if it happens once or multiple times, it, you shouldn't, like, put yourself in a position where you stay with someone who's unfaithful. And, you know, whatever people, like, as long as you have agency, like, in your choice and your decision and that you're doing it, like, based out of, like, because I feel like cheating, again, it's just, it's all situational. It's all dependent on, like you're with and like emotionally yeah like, i think are, while cheating is situational i don't think it's justifiable yeah no it's never justifiable i don't think there's time. ever a reason exactly. for cheating ever never never because my thing is you can literally text a person yes it's not morally correct but you can literally text the person and call them and be like you know what i'm breaking up with you right now and you could like do something with somebody else it's not considered cheating technically it's morally incorrect Mor nah. but mm -hmm. it's technically not considered mm -hmm. cheating so you yeah, can do but, that you get yeah. what i mean like you could literally yeah i don't yeah. know yeah. there's no reason for cheating Never no, reason. Just, we're just trying to clarify. Just not, right? Yeah. So next question, this leads us to, would you stay if you got cheated on? I wouldn't. Oh, well, I wouldn't only, but if I had kids, it would be a different case. I'm just saying, like, I feel like when kids are in the picture, like, if your husband or whoever cheats on you, mm -hmm. um, you have to reevaluate the whole situation because kids are in the picture. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like... But if, if I didn't have any kids and a guy was just cheating on me, nah, he's out of the picture. Yeah, I would say that as much as like you would just want to jump and say that like you would never stay, I think it's really contingent on like your situation. And like, like I said, I don't think cheating is justifiable at all. But when there's like real love there, yeah, like you will literally do anything to make, make your relationship excuses. work. Yeah. You will like literally like feed yourself lies yeah, and like no. try to blame it on yourself. So you're like blinded by love. Yeah, so I think like oftentimes like when people do get cheated on, like you can become extremely blinded by love. And so as much as you want to say you would never stay, like there's times where you just, you stay. stay. And you try like your hardest to make things work and like push through. 
But ultimately, like, I think it's about realizing that at the end of the day, like, if that person really did love you, they wouldn't cheat on you. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't want to do anything to hurt you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you just don't destroy somebody that you love. Nope. I totally agree. I totally agree. I feel like once you cheat, you literally, like, break that trust and that foundation that you work so hard for to yeah. build that person that you love. And I just feel like I know people make mistakes and people are human. But for me, for me, I feel like cheating breaks that trust and it's really hard to like gain that trust back. If you're willing to open your heart again to that person to build that trust again after cheating, you know, go right ahead. But just, you know, be wary, be careful about your your health, your soul, your humanity, your insanity, because you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you stay in a relationship that you don't trust the person. Right, right? yeah. And they're constantly doing it. And what's it a relationship you? without trust? Exactly. Like, yeah. I, like, if you exactly. cheated on me, I just feel like I would lose all respect for you and right. trust. And, like, to go back into that relationship, I just wouldn't be able to. Toxic. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what's so hard about it when you're trying to make it work because, like, you're feeding yourself all these excuses. You're forcing yourself to stay because you love that person. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, like, it's just killing the both of you because, yeah. like, you don't trust that person. So it's, like, mm-hmm. causing more stressors on a relationship. And right. it's just like, you just keep going in circles and circles and just not it's getting anywhere. And it's like, let me tell y'all, protect your peace and protect your heart. Because, like we said earlier, cheaters, if you cheat once, you will cheat again. Yeah. Ooh. We're just some college students, like, we've been in relationships, but it's like... Yeah, we've, we've all been in relationships, but we're not experts or love experts at all, obviously. Not even close. <laughs> not even close. But, but we can give her I mean, she got a man. I had a man last year, but life goes on. <laughs> and she I was getting was a man, but I guess it didn't work out. I don't know. T T T. I really like the rice balls. What is it called? Puto. Puto. Yeah, rice balls. I like the puto. Rice cakes. I feel like it balances out like the sweetness with the spicy and stuff. So here's a totally different question of not even cheating anymore. Um, are you a hoe if you have sex on the first night? No. No. No! It is up agency. To you. Agency. Yes. It is up to you. Do what you want. If you feel like you're not a hoe for sleeping with a man on the first night, go for it. No. I think it's like so often like people say, or people have this idea of like, when women sleep with men on the first date, mm-hmm. it's like, like an worst thing you can do, but it's like, people don't think about it the other way around. Like, the men is also, like, the man is also sleeping with the woman on the first date, so why isn't there a question circulating around that? Like, why isn't there a stigma <clears throat> behind it's that? Picture. No, I'm actually, that's <laughs> yeah. just the double standard society no, has set yeah, exactly. for so many, like, forever on to, like, women. I think, like, if you want to have sex on your first date, like, go ahead. Who's going to stop you? Yeah, honestly... This is your life. You have, literally have one life. Live it. Like, for me, it's like an interview. So, like, okay, sexual compatibility is very important for me. It could not be important for some people. Um, but, I mean, that doesn't make me a hoe. It doesn't make you a hoe. But sex is a such home. a huge part of a relationship, I feel like. For some people. Like, well, if yeah. you are sexually, like, because, you know, there are also people who are identify as asexual yeah. who don't need right. sex. I feel like for people who are sexual or very sexually active, um, in the society that we live in, as a woman especially, being overtly sexual is seen as uh, making you a thought, a like whore. really negatively stigmatized. Exactly. But I feel like you could say the same, like, it's, it's the same for both sides. Like, I feel like if you're too sexual, then you're a hoe, and if you're not sexual at all, then you're a prude. Right. Like, there's really no happy medium. Yeah, there's like no between. Yeah, it's literally one or the other. Like, if a girl is having sex with her boyfriend, then that's when she's not a hoe. Yeah, right. you know what I mean. Like if she's literally like it's crazy. And it's pressure it pressures um you to be in this like relationship basically like that yeah. stigma where it's like oh the only time you're good to have sex is when it's you're like, getting yeah, in a relationship. Your relationship. I feel like it's just about like what you want ultimately. Like some people just want sex. I'm like people just date also to just have sex. Like I know right. plenty that's of fun. friends who just get on Tinder and like go on these first dates just to hook up and like that's totally okay. And if you want to hold out and if you want to, what's like what, what's the the time frame, like, like the the period, the ninety day, the ninety day, three months, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I mean, to each their own. Like, do you like exactly. if you feel like the first night is comfortable for you, then go have sex. If you yeah. feel like you gotta wait a year or two and yeah. do that too, we're, just, like honestly, oh sorry, yeah, we're okay. over. I'll just say there's nothing wrong with being a hoe, but we are just trying to say like no to how everyone just likes to assume like oh you're a hoe for having sex in the first night like no, but if you are a hoe, bitch, yeah, it's like. 
how I have agency in your life, it's your life, your body, do what you want, and if people look down on you, they're gonna judge you anyways, regardless of what you do. So live your yeah. best life. Right. So. I mean, people are always gonna have something to say, so you might as well give them something to talk about. Ah! Yeah! That is the truth. <laughs> I don't see why it should matter. Like, if, if Robbie wanted to sleep with a guy on the first date, I should look at her differently because of her choice right. to want to sleep with a guy on the first date. Like, I don't see why it should matter. What matters is not the body count or the amount of time you have sex or when you have sex, it's how you're having sex. And, and that it's safe. And that it's safe and that you're, you know. Yeah. And even if it's not safe, that you're taking precautionary measures afterwards. You know, people make mistakes and we're all living together yeah. and that's okay. Just as long as you're looking out for yourself and that, you know, you are taking care of your body and your health, your physical, sexual, and emotional, mental health. Like that's just yes. what we want to say in this video. Just look out for yourself, sisters, please. <laughs> and look out for your other sisters too, <laughs> please. On to the next question. On to the next. Yeah. But hold on, before we even go to the next question, can we like look at these plates? Okay. Plate update. Like the, the Mine, I got full, cool, but I'm, I'm getting second, so, so I'm getting seconds. It's okay, it's okay. This is um, so good. Can we go to the next question? Yes, we can go move on to the next question. I guess this will be our final, final question for the night. Um, why are women so attracted to broken men? Okay. Um, and it could be for the gays Hannah's too. Hannah's like, let fans, me tell y'all. Fans out there, gender queer people out there, any LGBT person, and I, anyone who's, you know, but mostly it's gonna forgive like, why are women attracted to men? I wanna hear this, I wanna hear it. I think, okay, I, <laughs> I'm low key on the lowest lows of keys having this problem, so I can really speak on this. It's like, but it's it's not it's like a subconscious thing. I don't even realize I'm doing it until recently. Yeah, a lot of people do it. Yeah, um, and I hate it. Like I'm trying to fix it because I hate this habit. So basically, it's just you think you're that one girl that can fix this this guy that's for it, you know. Yeah, every, you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like I don't know why I think like this. I'm always like, no, actually, I do know why I think like this. It's because the guys need you to think mm. that you're gonna be the one girl who's gonna. They tell mm. you these things, yeah. and so you're like, well, like you want to believe in yourself too. Yeah, you know? you're like, I'm a bad. Bitch, I literally I can change yes. him. No one else can. That's his life. I'm telling you, you can't change him. And that goes back to my point about the sun. Like, you're just your vision is blurred when you like somebody. So you're like, I can fix this person and everything. Like, you tell yourself stuff to make you to make yourself believe it. But at the end of the day, it's just like they're broken. You can't fix them. You're not the one. I think like for me, it's almost like when I see a broken guy, it's like makes me want to be with him even more because it's like. I have such like a nurturing like mom yes. type personality that I'm like, let me like let me make you food like let me do this for you and do this for you let me help fix you let me cook clean like just m nurture you like a mother would and, like, yeah we can never like expect men to come perfect I mean this is anyway. not like this is not build a boyfriend workshop or build a personal workshop mm -hmm. so it's like. As much as like you want to, it shouldn't be about fixing that person. It should be about like growing with that person wow. and like helping each other to grow. Yeah, I think it's like depends also on like what you consider broken. Cause like thinking like broken is kind of like what has put kind of men in a situation where they treat women like this. Yeah, I um, mean it could be against societal norms. It could be the way that they think. It could be the way they were brought up. They were brought yeah, up. That's the big part. Um, and that the kid make them broken to the point that they can't like fix or change their behavior for positive improvement or better yeah. outcomes. Um, and like what, what I want to say with for me, what I consider broken is someone that doesn't change. Like knowing that they made a mistake or knowing that their behavior or way of thought can be harmful, especially to women and just anyone in a marginalized community. Um, and then they're just like. Like, you know, people who are homophobic, who are, like, misogynistic, who Lots of interesting are racist, about it. and, like, they just don't want to change their behavior. Like, and then that's when I'm like, okay, you're broken, because you don't want to become a better person. Right? And these relationships are so toxic, because mm -hmm. you're over here really, like, working hard to change this person, and you really put all of your energy into it. Mm. And then when you don't see the results that you want, it's, like... It's exhausting. It's frustrating, exhaust. It's toxic, uh. and it's, like, if you're in that type of type of thing, run. Ain't nobody got time for that. No, no, no. Ain't nobody got time for that. You need to be fixing yourself. Yeah. Ain't nobody hey, got hey, time hey. to be fixing no man. No, <laughs> fix yourself first. Self-growth, self-love first. Yes. Right. Positivity. I totally agree, totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, it's literally yeah. after like a year of getting to know them and they'd be like, wait, hey, there's this big flaw that I have 
is that I'm broken. Yeah, so oh, fix me. Sad, <laughs> sad. And a, a lot of men also, I would say this, expect women to fix them or like stay with them. You know what I mean? Like through that like process. And a lot yeah. of women do. But again, like, you know, at the end of the day, we don't encourage you to do that. We encourage you to have agency and a well-informed, um, thought-out decision, which is totally. hard to do, again, when you're in an yeah. emotional a relationship. And we know because we've been in relationships and we're not love experts, but we just want to make sure that, um, again, you know, men can be deceiving. Sometimes women can be deceiving. Yeah, I was going to say, it's men and women, especially nowadays. It's, I feel like it's equal. No, yeah, yeah completely. Just, you know, I mean, obviously, true colors. True colors. <laughs> true colors. <laughs> no, it's actually like true colors will show eventually through time in a yeah. relationship. So just expect that to happen, that people don't come perfect and that they're really broken when they don't want to change for the better, honestly. People's facades always fall, so. Yep. Yeah. I think it's like, accept somebody for who they are. Mm-hmm. And when yeah, somebody shows them. you who they are, they are, believe yeah. them the first time. Do not wait y'all. till they show yeah. you something different because you're going to be the one who ends up getting hurt. Sadly, unfortunately. And Take so, that piece of advice and literally just stick with it. Like, yeah. When people show you who they are, believe them. So, yes. Wow, sisters. So this, fun. This yes. is some deep tea, <laughs> some hot sizzling Let's tea. All. Cheers. 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 <laughs> to the tea. I just want to again thank you guys for coming no, to my thanks for having us. Uh, <laughs> and just you know sharing your story. Thanks for the food, food. guys. Yes, that was great food. I'm sorry y'all couldn't have a taste of any of this, but guys, I honestly, like, everything is so good. Like yes. we crushed. We we came cultured in this bitch. Yes, honey. Yeah. Get in touch. <laughs> um, so I really enjoyed the topics that we talked about today. I hope that. You all learned a lot from this, and you know we learned a lot kind of from yeah. talking about this. Yeah, for sure. Know, girl talk is fun. Always have a girl talk, you know, with your sisters. I love talking with my girls. It's like therapeutic. No, it is actually, it's, it's not like therapeutic. It's, like therapeutic. it's, it's, it's yeah. definitely therapeutic. Yeah. yeah, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please yeah. comment down below what you think about this video, what topics you'd like to see in the future. Yeah, uh, we'd love to do this again. Let him know how much you love him, you know. Comment, like, subscribe. Show my and, boys um, some love. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously, I will have these girls again featured in my channel. And Gucci Bandana is actually starting her own YouTube channel. So, so yeah. <laughs> Once her channel is finally out, I will post it in the, my description down below. And yes. you can, like, subscribe and check her out. No, she does a lot of stay fashion. Tuned. Stay tuned, exactly. They will both be featured at some point. And hopefully, <laughs> Rabia will start her blog. So. Yes. <laughs> stay tuned. I'm working world. on it. Just... Yes. Thanks again. For watching my channel. Hey, 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 h